Hey y'all, Fallout here, and the brand new D2 Raid Vow of the Disciple is dropping in just two days. Crazy, right? I know. Well, I've had a ton of people asking me in my stream lately two things. One, what weapons should I bring into the raid on day one or on weekend one? And what am I, me, Fallout, the streamer, what am I personally bringing into the raid on day one? Today, why don't we do two things? First, I'll make a big list of all the kinds of weapons that you can bring into the raid that I think are guaranteed to do very well. And then after that, I'll talk you through a few builds that I'm bringing into the raid on day one. And hopefully that can help you kickstart a few ideas for you to put together your own day one raid loadout. Sound good? Alrighty then. Weapon wise, why don't we kick things off with primary ammo weapons, not kinetic, mind you, primary ammo weapons. Please keep in mind, there are more options than what I'm about to mention, but we already have one one hour video live on the channel this week. So these are just my favorite weapon options please feel free to add your own down below in the comments section. Okay, first weapon up is the brand new exotic Osteo Striga. This gun is absolutely cracked and I am 100% bringing it into the raid on day one. The Osteo is just a crowd control machine. You can fire it really easy. You don't have to do a whole lot of aiming. It'll just curve right into the enemy. The tracking is beautiful. It will poison the entire room. It can eat away at enemies like nothing and I really do love it. I think it's very strong. Right now you can't currently use it if you don't have the deluxe version of the Witch Queen, which kind of seems borderline unfair. But if you do have it, good news for you, you can use it in the day one raid. It is going to be cracked. Spoiler alert, one of my two raid builds later in the video is going to feature the Osteostriga. Okay, next primary weapon would be the Outbreak Perfected Exotic Pulse Rifle. I know it's kind of an old weapon, kind of old fashioned, but it is really good and it's been kind of a day one or weekend one raid staple for a long time for a reason. If your entire team can fully commit to the Outbreak Perfected, you have a really good shot at burning down whatever boss Bungie tries to throw at us on Weekend 1. Definitely really tempting to go with another exotic weapon because you have weapons out there like Deathbringer, Tractor Cannon, Gallarhorn, and what have you, but the Outbreak Perfected is just really, really reliable. Get everybody on the whole team to put one on if you all have one. I'm definitely going to be bringing one as a backup option for my raid team on weekend one and yeah just put it all on together and you can melt things in a big group really reliable very effective a lot of good damage potential for a primary weapon next up we have the dmt aka the dead man's tail now probably not a super top tier option but if you do have a dead man's tail with vorpal weapon i think that would be a great reliable damage dealing option in the day one raid for a primary weapon doesn't have the complete boss melting potential that the outbreak perfected does but you know in week one raids a lot of the times range is really important you don't want to get too close especially during the contest modifier and if there are any really big area encounters i think the dmt again especially with vorpal weapon could do very well why don't i just come out and say it if you have a dmt and it doesn't have vorpal weapon probably don't use it the exotic slot is really valuable and while i do think vorpal dmt would do well if you have just a regular dmt I think your exotic slot could probably be spent on something more important. Worth a mention for sure though. Okay, next up, any primary weapon featuring void damage. Should be kind of a no brainer, but void 3.0 is really, really strong right now. I think a lot of day one and weekend one raid teams are going to feature void 3.0 builds. One of the two builds I'm going to show you later of mine is a void 3.0 build and void 3.0 builds do really well with weapons that do void damage. With the right loadout, your void weapon can have volatile rounds, which is really huge. So any of the following weapons like the Funnel Web SMG, the Gnawing Hunger, Shira's Wrath, Graviton Lance, the Grid Skipper, anything that has void damage coming out of your primary weapon can do really well in the raid on Weekend 1. I got really lucky the other day. I got a Funnel Web SMG with both Frenzy and Subsistence, which I know a lot of people are hunting for, but it doesn't have to be that good of a god roll. Again, if you have a Gnawing Hunger with Kill Clip or Rampage, anything that does void damage you will be fine with. More on that a little bit later. But again, if you have a Void 3.0 build, you should strongly consider bringing a Void primary weapon. Next up, any primary weapon featuring the brand new perk Adaptive Munitions. Currently, there's only four weapons in the game with access to that perk. You have the Ogma PR6, the Come to Pass, the Under Your Skin, and the Pointed Inquiry. If you have any of those weapons that have dropped with Adaptive Munitions,
weapons, you should consider leveling it up and bringing it with you into the raid. The whole point is that we don't know how many shielded enemies are going to be thrown at us. We don't know what type of elemental shields they're going to have for each and every encounter. So having kind of like a jack of all trades weapon could really help you out a lot. That way you have that flexibility, that versatility, that no matter what elemental shields you're fighting, yeah, maybe your Agma PR6 rifle or whatever you brought into the raid is going to do better at helping your team break shields that you may not have been prepared for. Next up, any of the three big exotic bows, Monarch, Tiku, and the Trinity Ghoul. I really enjoy using bows in endgame PvE content. I think they all slap really hard, and the big three exotic bows are just super awesome. Monarch is great for chip damage, the Tiku's Divination is great for just putting the pain on one particular person repeatedly, and the Trinity Ghoul is a master of crowd control. I'd say if you're going to bring one bow and level up one bow, just bring all three. That way, if you decide that the encounter you're on maybe would be more deserving of void or maybe deserving of more arc damage, you can just cycle out the bows in your energy slot depending on what the encounter calls for. As long as you can open up your menu really quickly or just do it whenever your team dies and wipes, you can be pretty much prepared for anything as long as you bring all three of the big exotic bows. Next up, we have Thorn. And I know that I've already recommended the Osteostriga and that Thorn kind of takes a backseat to the Osteostriga, but as we've already covered, not everybody can run the Osteostriga. So if you're a Warlock player like me, if you have the Necrotic Grip, if you want to do a whole lot of chain poison damage, but you did not buy the Deluxe Edition of the Witch Queen, why not Rock Thorn? Are there other really strong exotic weapon options that you could also consider? Yeah, but just trying to put as many things out on the table that I enjoy as I can. Osteostriga does slap, but Thorn with Necrotic Grip, still really good for endgame PvE. Next up, we have the Huckleberry, kind of an oldie, but a goodie. If we're ever at a point in the raid where there's maybe just a lot of trash coming at you repeatedly, which there usually is a point like that in every raid, the Huckleberry is going to do great. Not super flashy, not super unique like the Gallarhorn or anything like that, but Huckleberry, again, reliable. You've got the ammo regeneration factor, you've got the extra damage output factor. It is a good primary weapon. It can help you cut through red bars really effectively. You should consider putting it on your loadout. Next, if you have one, a Messenger with Desperado. I no, not a lot of people out there have a messenger, but if you have one with Desperado, pretty rock solid in endgame PvE content. All you gotta do is pick off one red bar, and then for a little bit you trigger Desperado, and you can just kind of mow through people much more effectively. And again, on the upside, you don't have to use an exotic slot on the messenger, it's legendary. Okay, next up is the Lumina Hand Cannon, and kind of restricted mostly to Warlock, but if you have a Warlock, and they are not really sure what weapon to bring on your day one raid team, you can always recommend that they bring, at least as a backup, the Lumina Hand Cannon. The exotic armor, the boots of the assembler are still really good in PvE, and if your Warlock is already rocking those boots, you can absolutely tell them to put on the Lumina. It is just a peanut butter and jelly type pairing, and you're going to have a lot of extra damage output, a lot of healing on demand, just a really terrific combo. I'm not trying to leave Titan and Hunter players out in the cold, not my intention, but I'm going to imagine that pretty much 99% of all day one raid teams are going to include a warlock on the team in one way or another and might as well have them bring it just in case why not next we've got the Terraba. i've always really liked the Terraba. i think it has great damage output potential it recently got a buff in the witch queen and uh, i just enjoy it i think it's a great weapon for both pvp and for pve not terribly difficult to get that exotic perk ramped up and when you activate it you just have a ludicrous amount of damage output potential right at your fingertips definitely going to be more useful in those areas of the raid where you're cutting through a lot of low health bar enemies. I wouldn't bring the Terraba to a boss damage encounter or anything like that, but there's always a need for trash shredding weapons in any raid, and the Terraba is a great option. Getting down to the wire here on primary ammo weapons, and I'm going to say any really well-rolled scout rifle, probably the main two picks that I would bring would be either the Night Watch or the Hung Jury. If you're a veteran player or if you've been playing for a little bit and you have an adept Hung jury might as well bring it a lot of encounters in a week one raid or a day one raid really encourage you to fight from afar contest modifier on day one you're going to get hurt a lot 
so range can definitely be your friend. Between Hung Jury and the Night Watch, I've mentioned it before, I really prefer my curated Night Watch with explosive payload. I love that gun. Didn't have to do any real grinding for it, just banged it out from the New Light quest, but uh, I do think it's a terrific gun. Always bring a backup scout rifle for high-end PvE content. Final recommended primary weapon, I'm going to say any primary with the perk headstone on it, and that is especially if you are bringing a stasis build. I know a lot of people out there are bringing Void 3.0 because Void 3.0 is super hot fire right now, confirmed. But even with all that super hot fire, a lot of stasis builds are looking good on paper for a day one raid right now. So if you are bringing in a stasis build, and I know many of you are thinking about it, definitely try to pair together a uh, primary weapon with the perk headstone on it. The crate, if you have the brand new crate from the Witch Queen, that is a terrific weapon. Really enjoy it. Alrighty, why don't we move on to special weapons. Any weapon at all that is going to feature or use green ammo. And why don't we start off with RB, the Arbalist. Even though we're no longer in a particle deconstruction meta, Arbalist is still really, really powerful in endgame PvE content. You've got long range, you've got strong punching power, you've got intrinsic anti-barrier, and you have the ability to break and fight against any type of elemental shield in the game. Oh, did I also mention disruption break for when you break that elemental shield, you can now clown on that enemy even harder. If you're really not sure what to use for your day one or weekend one raid team, especially as you're on the way to the boss fight and just trying to punch through champions or mini bosses or whatever, yeah, definitely bring Arbalist no matter what. At the very least, even if it's sitting in your inventory not being used, you should feel good about having it there. It's good for almost any encounter. Next up, we have the Divinity. Duh. I know a lot of people out there don't have the Divinity. It is quite a rare weapon, especially for new players, because it's kind of a chore to go and get. But the Divinity remains a very reliable, rock solid weapon. You can pretty much bring it into any raid and it will not be unwelcome or out of place. I did put a video out this week mentioning that there is a problem if you're running a Void 3.0 build that features Weaken in any way. If you pair Weaken and the Divinity together on an enemy, Weaken will override Divinity, which is actually not what you want because the Divinity debuff is stronger than Void 3.0 Weaken, but Void 3.0 Weaken completely overrides Divinity. So you definitely can bring Divinity, just make sure that you're talking with your fire team about how if someone is bringing Divinity to make sure that it is not clashing with or getting overridden by anybody's Void 3.0 build. Alrighty, next up we have the Dead Messenger Exotic Grenade Launcher, the brand new Waveframe Exotic Grenade Launcher. Rock solid weapon. Big explosions on the floor, very large, and also the ability to deal solar arc void damage. It is really versatile, kind of like a hard light, but with special ammo. Moving on, we have one of my favorites, any blinding grenade launcher, especially if it is paired together with the perk auto loading holster. I think that might be limited to just the truth teller, the empty vessel, and the pardon our dust. Correct me if there's more than just those three, but those three grenade launchers, if you have the pairing of blinding grenades and auto loading holster, you are sitting on a crack raid weapon. Spoiler alert, one of my builds that I will show you at the end of the video that I'm going to bring into the raid on day one does feature a blinding grenade launcher. They are disgustingly viable in endgame PvE. All you gotta do is fire one nade into a crowd, bam, everybody becomes completely worthless. You can take your time and pick them apart, or you can just not fight them at all if you need to get from one area to another without getting harmed or just leave an encounter. That'll work too, but if you want to just shut down a crowd of people, bam, that'll work. It's just the blinding grenade launcher is so powerful in endgame PvE content. Again, auto-loading holster is just mwah, the icing on the cake because you can just quickly fire one out, swap to whatever other weapon that you have, clean everything up, and the gun will auto-reload itself, meaning you can just whip it out again later and do the whole thing over and over again. Those weapons are just beautiful. If you have one, absolutely bring one to the raid. Okay, next, we have any sniper rifle with either triple tap and vorpal weapon or triple tap tap and firing line or fourth times the charm and firing line or fourth times the charm and vorpal weapon. Any combination of the two where in column three you are getting ammo back into your mag for landing crit shots and in column four some kind of perk that is going to give you extra damage either vorpal weapon or firing line. You've got the adored, you've got the brand new Fugu 55, there's plenty of options out there. TLDR, you should go through your vault 
and see if you have any sniper rifles that have either some kind of perk in column three, again, triple tap or fourth times the charm, and in column four, either vorpal weapon or firing line. Again, day one contest modifier is no joke, and we don't know what the boss encounters are going to be like, but if there is a boss encounter where you can do big damage with your team from far away, any of those legendary snipers with those perks are going to do great in a damage phase. Okay, next up we have one of my favorite exotics for PvE of all time, the Wither Horde. Wither Horde was really popular back in the day when Warmind Cells were kind of the big PvE endgame deal. Warmind Cells have gotten nerfed and nobody really uses them right now, as far as I'm aware, but the Wither Horde is still great. If you get the exotic Catalyst turned on, which ain't that difficult, you get automatic auto-loading holster and you can just do a terrific job of spamming the battlefield with big damage dealing globs on the ground and then putting it away, it'll auto-reload fantastic weapon. Also, remember, Wither Horde is pretty good at boss damage too. All you gotta do, tag a boss with the Wither Horde directly, it will internalize that poison damage and just chip away at its health, and then while it's bleeding away from the inside, you can chip away at it with whatever other weapon you might have at the time. Next, we have the Enigma, aka the brand new Glaive in the Witch Queen. Bungie has mentioned on Twitter that they are keeping their eye on a few things which are potentially raid-breaking, and unsurprisingly, one of those things is the glaive. There are a lot of videos out there right now of people using builds that feature the glaive, mainly paired together with the hunter, that just result in comical loadouts, unlimited invisibility, suppressing everybody. It's really wild what you can do with a glaive right now. Don't go completely 100% all in on a glaive build for the day one or weekend one raid, just in case Bungie decides to uh, cut everybody's fun, which again, I wouldn't be shocked by, but just in case they let the glaive go for the day one or weekend one raid, bring a glaive, bring a glaive build, have your hunter abuse everyone and everything. Again, worst thing that happens is they don't allow you to bring it, but then you use another loadout. Next weapon, which I think not a lot of people might bring, but I definitely am going to bring one, the fourth horseman exotic shotgun. Most people right now are focusing on void weapons or void damage, because again, void 3.0 is really hot right now, but the fourth horseman completely shreds people. If there is any encounter in the brand new raid where you have to do a big amount of burst damage from really close up to an enemy, Fourth Horseman is going to shine really hard, especially because there's some kind of bug going on right now with the Lament. Yeah, it does eat through ammo pretty badly, but it's really good at what it does. Incredible burst damage at close range, and we might need that in the new raid. Next weapon or two, kind of in the same camp under the same umbrella, any Vorpal weapon slug shotgun, the Philo, aka the first in last out, or the brand new Fortissimo. Not quite as godly as the Fourth Horseman, but then again, if you're exotic slot is already being used by something else and you need strong close quarters weaponry, sure, Philo, Fortissimo, especially if they have Vorpal, they'll do fine. Next, and this might be a little bit too broad, but any Void special weapon. I will continue to mention that Void 3.0 is currently very, very cracked, and if you want to take advantage of all that Void 3.0 has to offer, it is strongly recommended that for the most part you at least bring some kind of Void weapon pairing into the raid. And you've got a fair amount of things to work with. If you've got a deafening whisper grenade launcher, if you've got the Lorentz driver, if you've got hell, even the goddamn Telesto bound to break a thing or two in the new raid, any void special weapon at all. Again, provided you are running a void 3.0 build, which I'm assuming many people will. Another weapon that falls under that umbrella for sure, the ruinous effigy. Don't sleep on that weapon, pairs together with a lot of void 3.0 builds. Uh, ridiculously well. Okay, next up we have the Ager Scepter. Again, this is probably limited to people who are running a stasis build in the new raid at day one or weekend one. Many people out there, I've mentioned it a hundred times, I'll mention it a hundred more, are running Void 3.0, weekend one of the new raid. One of my loadouts is Void 3.0, it's very good right now. But stasis builds, still very terrific in endgame PvE, not to be slept on for sure, and Ager Scepter is an ideal pairing for a build like that. Final special weapon I want to mention would be the Izanagi's Burden. I uh, haven't heard people talking about this sniper rifle in a while. 
I get it, it's kind of old news, there's a lot of new fun stuff going on right now, but that doesn't mean that the Izanagi cannot clap cheeks because it can. Especially if you have someone on your team rocking the Divinity. Divinity and Izanagi's Burden together is a classic tried and true huge burst damage dealing combo. Don't forget about it, if someone on your team is rocking Divinity, just totally why not bring a Izanagi. Okay, moving on, power weapons. Power weapons to bring into the day one or weekend one raid, and the first option is the Deathbringer. Just in case you didn't know, Volatile Flow and a whole bunch of other things under the new Void 3.0 umbrella pair really well with the Deathbringer Exotic Rocket Launcher. It is a really good option, I would say, for pretty much any endgame PvE encounter right now. I know it might fire awkwardly, it's not smooth and crispy like other rocket launchers, but again, pairs terrifically with Void 3.0 builds, which are very strong right now. You should definitely bring one just in case. Next up, the Gallerhorn. Surprise, but not really. Gallerhorn is unbelievably strong and it's really, really easy to use. Might not pair with a Void build as well as something like the Deathbringer, but the good news about the G-Horn is that you just really need one person on the team to bring one, and if anyone else has a rocket launcher, they automatically get powered up. So Gallerhorn is a terrific power weapon option to bring into the day one raid. Next up, we have the Parasite, aka the Worm Launcher. Probably not as good as the Gallerhorn, uh, IMHO, but overall, very strong, very reliable burst damage. You just take it out when you need it. Huge, huge chunks of damage, nuke the room, and then put it away. Next up is the Tractor Cannon, another really terrific pairing with a lot of new Void 3.0 builds. And not for nothing, Tractor Cannon has always been good in PvE content. Being able to debuff and weaken the enemy by just tagging them with a power weapon, that's really fantastic. The entire team is going to appreciate it, and the fact that it just pairs with a lot of Void builds right now is just icing on the cake. Next, we've got the Sleeper Simulant. I know we're not in a particle deconstruction meta anymore, that perk is gone, but even with PD gone off the artifact, the Sleeper is still a really reliable damage dealing power weapon. You've got excellent range, you've got pinpoint accuracy, really what more could you want? None of my builds right now feature the Sleeper, but you can better believe that I'm going to be bringing it just in case. Next, we have the 1k Voices, kind of the exact same umbrella as the Sleeper. None of my builds right now currently do feature the 1k voices, we're not in a particle deconstruction meta anymore, but it's still a really reliable strong power weapon. I'm gonna have it as a backup option in case we find out that we need it for some reason. Next is the Lament, kind of. There's a little bit of a damage thing, a bug going on with Lament right now. I think there is some kind of hit detection problem going on in D2 and I believe the Lament is being affected. A lot of scattered reports here and there about the Lament, but if we do get that straightened out, Lament is a top tier damage dealing option from up close, so I'm going to bring it just in case. Next, I'm going to say any rocket launcher or any grenade launcher that features auto loading holster, especially if that grenade or rocket launcher features void damage. Void 3.0, so hot right now, so in, so hot, so now, it is terrific. And again, auto loading holster is just a cracked perk. If you want to bring some kind of legendary power weapon that you know is going to do well, especially if your team is rocking void 3.0, yeah, any void auto loading rocket or grenade launcher will do perfectly. Really, if I'm being honest, I should just say any void dealing power weapon. I have an auto loading frenzy threaded needle, which should do a-okay if I wanted to bring it. Pairs really well with void 3.0. All right, now that we've gone over a whole bunch of weapon options, I will answer a question I've been getting hit with a lot on stream, which is what am I bringing to the day one raid? If you're out there trying to put together some day one raid loadout and you either don't know where to begin or if you've hit a wall, Here's two loadouts I'll be bringing into the day one raid. Maybe they can help you kickstart a little brainstorming session on your own. Quick note, these are not my only two builds, I've got more, but yesterday's video alone was already an hour long. I'm not saying that these are the best raid loadouts by any means, I just think that they're interesting and if they help you brainstorm ideas for your raid team, great. Or you can just flat out steal my ideas if you want, what the f*** do I care? Here's loadout number one for me, a Void 3.0 Warlock. I've been mainly grinding out my Warlock for the day one raid, I'm one of two Warlocks on my team overall. Weapon-wise, my Warlock has Wither Horde paired together with an awesome Funnel Web SMG that I got the other day, which has both Subsistence and Frenzy. Funnel Web pairs really well with Void builds, but more on that in a minute. My power weapon is a Royal Entry Rocket Launcher, which again is Void. It's got both impact casing and lasting impression. Really unfortunate that it doesn't have an auto-loading holster. That would have been perfect, but eh. 
RNG is RNG, what are you gonna do? Here's what I got armor-wise. My helmet is the Verity's Brow. When I get any void weapon final blows, I get death throws, which gives me a grenade damage buff and grenade energy. Great overall exotic for Void 3.0 Warlock. I've got both grenade launcher and rocket launcher ammo finder, as well as elemental armaments. This particular raid build of mine features elemental well mods because they're really good right now in the Witch Queen. On my gauntlets, I've got rocket launcher reloader. Again, really wish my royal entry had auto loading, but oh well. Between rocket launcher reloader, Reloader and Impulse Amplifier on my Royal Entry, the reload speed is pretty damn good. I've also got Elemental Ordnance for even more Elemental Well generation, especially because I plan on throwing a lot of grenades. On my chest armor, I've got both Concussive Dampener and Thermoshock Plating, although I could easily take Dampener off and put on Void Resist to be better protected against everything. I've also got Volatile Flow, which is a god tier, disgusting armor mod in the land of Void 3.0. I'm already going to be generating a lot of Void Elemental Wells, and every time I pick one up, Volatile Rounds Galore. Pairs very well with my Funnel Web SMG. On my leg armor, I've got both Grenade and Rocket Launcher Ammo Scavenger, not to mention the ultra cheap Font of Might. That way, when I get Elemental Wells, I also boost the damage on both of my Void Weapons. For class armor, I've got Distribution, which I could switch to Perpetuation if I wanted to, either would be fine, but I've also got Well of Tenacity. So now when I pick up a Void Elemental Well, which should happen a lot, I also become tankier and take reduced incoming damage. Remember, that got buffed in Witch Queen, it's now what Protective Light used to be. Finally, I have Overload Grenades because, uh, eh, why not? Raids very frequently feature champions, so if we have Overload Champions, I'm covered. I know, I have an SMG, but if you remember my Gauntlet armor was full, and Overload SMG is kind of bugged right now. On the Void Tree, I've got Feed the Void and Chaos Accelerant. Chaos Accelerant is great because I've got 100 Discipline and Verity's Brow, so I'm going to be throwing a lot of overcharged strong grenades. Echo of Remnants allows my grenades to last even longer, and with with Echo of Undermining, I also happen to weaken any enemy that I end up tagging with a grenade. Feed the Void is great. Devour hopefully will give me extra survivability in the raid, and because my weapons can get volatile rounds thanks to my armor loadout, those explosions can also trigger Devour. Icing on the cake, Echo of Expulsion for extra explodey destruction, and more proccing of Devour. Here's a second day one raid build I put together. This one might be a little bit more old-fashioned, but eh. Everybody on the team can't be a Void 3.0 damage dealing machine. Raid build number two features Radiant Well. Again, Void is really hot right now, but Radiant Well remains cracked, and I would be shocked if it weren't viable or needed in the new raid. Weapon-wise, I've got the godly new Osteostriga SMG paired together with a blinding, auto-loading, disruption break truth teller. I've had this grenade launcher for a really long time, and I love it to death. Blinding auto-loading is a ridiculous combo in PvE, and if I proc disruption break, my Osteostriga gets to do even more damage. My power weapon is a hothead rocket launcher, launcher with tracking and clown cartridge. Almost the dado roll, but again, RNG, what are you going to do? I could rock another power option, but I know that another member of my team is bringing Gallarhorn, so I'm planning most of my builds to include rocket launchers to take advantage of a friendly Gallarhorn. Armor-wise, my exotic armor is the Necrotic Grip. Like Thorn, the grip pairs well together with Osteo, and my game plan is pretty much to poison explode the entire room, kind of a crowd control build. On my helmet, I've got Harmonic Siphon. As long as my Osteo is going to be poisoned the whole room and hopefully getting a lot of multi kills with necrotic grip might as well spawn a bunch of orbs along the way. I've got rocket launcher ammo finder, although I could go grenade finder to feed my truth teller more often if I wanted to. Finally, on the helmet, I have blast radius. Yeah, I know. Elemental wells kind of outperform charged with light right now. However, most of my elemental well builds are on my void warlock and might as well show off some charged with light here on the channel for the sake of variety. After all, Johnny Day Job may not have all the elemental well mods, and as always, we're doing it for. Johnny. Now I'll get charged with light when I kill multiple enemies, either with my nade or rocket launcher. Gauntlet armor. I've got SMG loader for my osteo, and I've got taking charge. Again, just another way of easily getting charged with light. Chest armor. I've got thermoshock and concussive like before, but I also have elemental charge. I know for a fact that no matter what, someone on my team will be making elemental wells. They're very popular right now, so as long as they're making them, I may as well have another way to become charged with light. Leg armor. I've got both rocket and grenade scavenger. I I love that Rocket Scav is only one energy on the artifact mod right now. Huge. Might be overdoing it a tad, but I also have Shield Break Charge. Pretty much, I'm going to be charged with light the entire time. On my class item, I've got Argent Ordnance, so whenever I'm in a situation where I need big 
few level amounts of damage to any one target, the rocket launcher comes out and Argent Ordnance turns on. Between Argent, the fact that I have Rocket Scavenger, and the fact that a teammate of mine is bringing Gallarhorn, my Clown Cartridge Hothead Rocket Launcher can really shine with big damage. All right, there you go. Hopefully that answers your question of, hey, what do you bring into the raid? And also maybe helps you kickstart a few ideas for your own build. Again, those two loadouts aren't my only ones. I've got a Phoenix Protocol loadout, I've got a Lunafaction boot loadout, and more. Apologies to my Titan and Hunter bros out there, Warlock is my day one play, but if you're watching today's video and you have a Titan or Hunter raid build that you are hyped about, feel free to share it down in the comment section. A lot of awesome build options floating around out there, Hunter Unlimited Invisible Glaive Suppression, Titan Overshield Abuse, definitely a lot to work with, and thank you to anyone who wants to share their loadout below. Do me a favor and like today's video if it helped you in any way, and share with your raid team if you're trying to figure out your loadouts for the day one raid. I will 100% be streaming my POV of the world's first raid race on Saturday, March 5th on my Twitch channel. Hope to see you there. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.